Welcome to a new video series in Discrete Mathematics. This is going to be a full course walkthrough and a companion to the textbook by Rosen. So what that means is uh, that we're going to be following the textbook, Discrete Mathematics and its Applications. I'll be using the eighth edition. It's by Rosen. Probably the edition isn't terribly important, but I don't know that for a fact, so in any case, this will amount to a course walkthrough, meaning that basically I will talk through uh, reading the textbook and then doing selected exercises, uh, either from the textbook or that I make up. I should emphasize that this video series is emphatically not a replacement for the textbook. I will not be showing the pages of the textbook and I don't discuss everything that is in the textbook and I also don't discuss it in the same order or explain it in the same way. So there's a fair amount of divergence between what is in this video series and what's in the textbook. This is meant to be a companion to the textbook, which is to say that it's meant to make it easier for you to read the textbook by basically having multiple sources for the same information, right? Having multiple explanations of the same idea, if anything uh, needs further explanation, uh, to see exercises and solutions to exercises and so on, uh, to hear a little bit of the thought process rather than maybe just the, the results of uh, these mathematical theories. So that's the intent, is it's, it's really meant to make the textbook more readable. And so you will probably need to somehow get your hands on a copy of the textbook to follow along. As for the plan uh, for the entire sort of semester, I will try to release about a 10 minute video per week on average. That's a very slow pace. Uh, I do, you know, I'm doing other video series in parallel with this and also I have a day job so it makes it hard to find the time to do these things. So that's about as much as I can promise or at least uh, I, ho I hope, uh, you know, try to accomplish. Uh, because of all this, and because it is hard to predict what the audience will be interested in, then, uh, you know, maybe the audience isn't always interested in everything, and I maybe want to try to skip over things to be a little bit more fast-paced. And so, therefore, I'm going to follow a policy of skipping things somewhat liberally, and I will, you know, if, if uh, people want to comment uh, and make requests for further videos on the things that I have chosen to skip, then you can leave a comment on the video. And if I have time, I may uh, circle back and uh, well, I may answer questions in the comments or uh, for more involved things, maybe even make uh, videos to fill in those gaps. And if you would like to support me, maybe make it a little more possible for me to take time away from my day job and devote more time to making these videos, then you could always leave a donation at my Ko-Fi account. You can see the web address here. It should be linked in the video description below. Okay, let's talk prerequisites. There's really pretty minimal prerequisites. This is an introductory level university course. And so all we really assume is a background in algebra and geometry, just at the high school level. Uh, so that's that. It's uh, it, it's an advanced course, right? I mean, it's a it's a challenging course. So maybe don't don't get the wrong impression that uh, this is going to be very sort of quick and easy. Um, but uh, but we don't make a lot of assumptions about what students come in already knowing. Okay, a few words on doing exercises. So uh, learning really only happens in the exercises, right? It, you can uh, watch all these videos, watch somebody explain things and watch them do things. And really you can fool yourself about just how much you are learning in the process. And so you really have to do exercises, and I think it's best to perhaps structure these lessons around the exercises at least as much as around the content of the lessons. So I am going to structure these videos around the exercises. And so that means that I am going to try to get as quickly as I can to the next exercise. You know, basically every video, I'm going to try to present only enough material to get to an exercise, present an exercise, and end the video. 
in the beginning of the next video, I solve that left, you know, that, that exercise that we left on. So I start the video with a solution from the previous video, continue into new material and make my way to another exercise and end the video on an exercise again and just do this over and over again. That is the rhythm that I'm gonna try to aim for. I'm not sure that I'll always be able to uh, keep up that sort of pattern, but that's at least the aim. Uh, you should, at the end of every video, not let the next video play and instead stop the video start trying to solve the exercise by yourself, you should, you know, make a really concerted effort, right? Really try, you know, get out the textbook, rewatch the video if necessary, and really make an effort to uh, do the exercise all on your own before comparing your solution with my solution. Now, I do think that you can take this too far, right? Uh, if you really spend too much time exerting yourself with no success, then I think you will be less productive than if you eventually, you know, even if you're stuck, uh, you can like watch somebody else's solution. And that can be more productive than continuing to uh, try when you're making no progress. So there's, there's a kind of right balance there you should not give up too early and giving up too early. I think honestly, we all will understand that the natural temptation is to give up too early. We would all be much more comfortable just seeing the solution and not struggling in our confusion so, for so long. So generally people's instinct is to give up too early, but it's also possible to give up too late uh, when you could have been more productive by just seeing a solution and learning from that. So in any case, it's always tough to strike that balance and there is no good rule. There is no uniform, you know, simple rule for how much time each problem should take so that you, you just have to acquire that skill of, of understanding that by doing a lot of practice and just kind of getting a good sense of, of how that goes. So in any case, right, I can't give you any advice about how long you ought to be spending, but just try to uh, find the right balance of time for yourself. And uh, with that, we've now discussed all of these notes, and therefore in the next video, we will start on discrete mathematics.